Fire is important to landowners, both for ecology and management of their properties. But like a tractor, knowing how and when to use it before you start the engine is critical to safety and effectiveness. That's probably one of the biggest things is people don't understand until they've participated in several burns uh, how important the prep is. I mean, that's all the world difference between a, a good burn and a really tough burn is how that unit's prepared. Determining if your land needs fire often starts with a visit to the Natural Resources Conservation Services or other landowner assistance offices. When a producer comes in with interest on, on how to uh, apply conservation practices or stewardship to their land, uh, we work with them to assess, you know, uh, from a resource inventory, what they have uh, available to them, what their land actually contains from a, from a plant community standpoint, what kind of conservation issues or resource concerns that they might have. And if prescribed fire or native grass or native plant community management is a part of that, then we would also uh, probably pursue and find out what their interests are with the use of prescribed fire. We would also offer to help them develop a prescribed burn plan that safely uh, you know, addresses uh, the issue of being able to apply it, but also uh, defines what that objective should be and help them to reach their goals. Each fire must have a goal and objective. The goal is the big picture reason why a burn is needed. For example, to maintain a healthy grassland or to increase livestock stocking rates for production. The objective is specifically what producers hope to accomplish with the fire, such as reducing cedars by a certain amount or increasing the number of native species of birds and plants, even butterflies. The more specific the objectives are, the better. Yeah, you should never put fire in the ground if you don't have a goal and an objective for that fire. It's not something you do for recreation. If you don't have a goal, you don't know what you're trying to accomplish. It's helpful for landowners to communicate their goals and objectives when working with neighbors or a fire association. The goals are left up to the landowner and, and whatever entity they're working with. And then we just try to help them implement those goals that are on their fire plan and, and make sure we're, we're, we're using fire to the best of its ability to accomplish their goals. You know, it may be a real hot fire or it may be a real slow, slow burning back burn fire. From their goals and objectives, landowners can evaluate the results of a fire. Each fire is gonna have its own goal. So you have to judge your success by, you know, you know what your goal was to start with, then after the fire, how much of that did we accomplish? So. We try to go back afterwards and, and we take pictures afterwards of, of what it is and then another six months afterwards we'll try to get a, a report and, and see how successful it was. Once the plan is ready, producers can start preparing for a fire, a process that can take years, especially for first-time burns. Fuel loads can sometimes be high in a burn unit that has not been previously burned. I usually start two to three years before I burn. I'll find a pasture that a lot of times the ease of the burn has a, has a, a bearing on what I do with it and how I do it and when I do it. Creating fire breaks, also known as fire guards or burn lines, is critical in controlling a fire. Fire breaks can be natural features such as streams or roads, or constructed such as plow or mow lines. And a good fire break is something you can drive this brush truck all the way around the perimeter and, and preferably it's down to bare dirt. You do need a tree-free quarter all the way around. Uh, you have to be able to get vehicle access most of the way around. Sometimes we, we don't get all the way around. Uh, you have to have mowed lines and those sorts of things in, in place and it takes a lot of work in a tough landscape. I do a little bit of overkill on my fire guards because I don't want the problems with it. The wider the fire guard, the easier it is to sleep at night for two or three days after the fire is burning out. While the entire burn unit should be surrounded by a fire break, particular attention needs to be paid to the downwind portion. That, that's always the trickiest, most dangerous part. By that I mean having a, a cleared space, no cedar, no cinder producing materials within 100 to 200 yards of your downwind perimeter. The size of good fire breaks varies with the height and type of vegetation being burned, as well as the conditions you plan to burn under. Keeping a fire under control also requires the proper equipment and adequate manpower. When preparing for a fire, 
the landowner needs to make sure he has enough help, as prescribed by the burn plan, and everything is in working order. We have 100, 150, 200 foot flame links in some of these canyons and it throws debris a long ways downwind. And that's why the bigger units are actually safer than the smaller units because you have to build a lot deeper black pocket on the downwind side. In order to have an adequate fuel supply to carry the fire and achieve objectives like reducing cedars, grazing may need to be managed for one to two years prior to the burn. We start shearing and we're doing the prep work and all that and then we for the two years out and then we'll defer for a year don't graze and all this and then we'll come back in that next spring and we'll burn it off and if we don't defer our grass or whatever our fuel loads are so low i mean that you're only looking at maybe a ton per acre or whatever fuel load to where if we'll defer we can get up to two and a half three tons a fuel load of grass to help initially preheat the cedar trees and, that, and get the cedar trees to take off and get a more substantial kill. The burn plan also states what weather conditions are acceptable before, during, and after the burn. Pay attention to the weather, see what your wind speeds are going to be, your wind directions, make sure there's not going to be any fronts coming through in three hours that your wind's going to come out of a different direction. We try to use certain standards when it comes to burning, so for, for safety purposes, we set rem limitations on our uh, relative humidity and our wind speeds and our temperature. We try to use the same ones that the local NRCS evolved. Our relative humidity would be with nothing less than 20 percent. Wind speeds nothing greater than 20 miles per hour and our temperature is nothing greater than 80 degrees. The weather, including wind speed and direction, is important for safety and smoke management as well. For the most part, it just depends on the weather and mainly the wind. The wind direction plays a lot of as to where we go first. We got to have the wind in the right direction. Can't blow it on the highways, don't want to blow it over the airports. And if it's just blowing too hard, we can't handle it. We just don't do it. Wetter fuels will create more smoke than dry fuels. Websites like KS Fire and OK Fire will help burners determine how much smoke will be created, where it will go, and its impact on air quality. Don't be afraid to walk away. Just, you know, be patient. You can always come back another day, you know, and get it done right. It's a lot better to, to do that than have smoke going the wrong way. And finally, after a fire, the landowners need to critically evaluate their efforts beginning with the most obvious questions. Did anybody get hurt? Were there any spot fires or even a, a, a runaway fire? So if it, if it was a safe fire, you have to say that's a good fire. If you, any fire you can walk away from is a good fire. Landowners should also evaluate the results of the fire. Did it meet the objectives of the burn plan? As the vegetation returns, the burn should be reevaluated to determine if any changes need to be made for the next fire. While preparing land is crucial, preparing the landowner is just as important. The NRCS and local extension agents can help direct producers to state organizations that provide training and support. But landowners can benefit from the experience of joining with neighbors that already burn. But probably you should spend time working with somebody that burn a lot of country try to partner up with them, neighbor up with them, and, and spend some time with them. First thing I suggest is get involved. You know, come, come to some burns, you know, see what's going on. There, there's nothing like hands-on experience. Actually, most of our training's been on, on the job training, learn by doing. You're not gonna become an experienced uh, prescribed fire applicator in, in one event. You know, it's gonna take time. Learn what will burn, what won't burn, and what will happen if something catches on fire that you don't want to catch on fire. I have done this long enough that I don't fear a fire, but I damn sure respect it. <laughs>